Where's my darn yarn? Welcome to episode number six of the Dye Pod. My name is Petra. My name is Robert. And we come to you from Ekoe in Sweden. Uh, and you can also find us uh, on Instagram at Fruvalborg and on Ravelry as the Dye Pod, where we have a call going on and uh, some threads. Yeah, maybe. Yes, yeah. just, just a few threads. Yeah, and uh, www.fruvalborg.se is our website. Yes, come, yeah. and, come and find us please. Yes. So Petra, it's been about a <laughs> month, I think, since we did the last uh, episode. Mm -hmm. That was number five, uh, anniversary. Now it's just a normal episode, I guess, number six. <laughs> what has happened since last time? Uh, we have been in Denmark. You and me and our five daughters, and uh, we were there for about five days. We traveled on Wednesday uh, the last week and uh, came home on Sunday. So we visited Tivoli. Yes, it's a big amusement park for the ones who haven't been there, in the middle of Copenhagen. Very, very charming and a lot of rides. Yeah, yeah I thought it was nice because it was kind of old with the. Um, you felt the old spirit in the, <laughs> in the park, mm -hmm. I thought. It was over a hundred years old, right? Yeah, I think, I think it was from. 175 eight, years old. Or 1850 something. or something. Uh, 1850 or something. I think they built, built it up first. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And it was kind of small so the children could go around by themselves uh, without us panic <laughs> or anything yeah so uh, yeah and they loved it yeah mm. and we just for the record we the two of us we did all the rides as well yes we, we still got it yeah mm. Mm. and we have another very fun activity going on which will probably live with us for a while <laughs> what is that Peter? it we live because we're many people in our family we live in a rather big house it was previous a, a, fa a house for two families, I think, and uh, but it's rebuilt and um, <clears throat> it's a wood house, and of course we need to paint it now, <laughs> which is very fun. <laughs> and yes. we're using this uh, old uh, farm paint, uh, where yeah. it's kind of it's not really like a paint but it's something else and uh, instead of uh, you having to use this metal thing on the wall before you paint again you have to use a brush yeah so you have to brush off the old paint it's kind of like a powder paint yeah and the, and the first day we did that you wrecked your shoulder <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wrecked my shoulder <gasps> yeah I did actually but it passed after three days so now um, and that was the only day we have paint. no? no two no day, two days yeah. We only, I would say that we actually only have maybe 98% left to do. <laughs> yeah, at least 99, 99 maybe. Maybe 99. Yeah. yeah. But at least uh, the 1% is done. Mm -hmm. And we can be happy with that. Mm -hmm. It feels kind of heavy though. Yeah. It was like painting with a manic depression person when I painted with you the first day. It was a bit of a challenge. I couldn't find my inner strength. No. To paint. Yeah. I haven't found it yet either. No. I had it for a while and now I lost it again. I just looked at our neighbor's house all the day when we were painting because they have a stone house and I just, how crazy were we when we bought this giant wood house? And uh, yeah. now I think it's kind of small because you live in it and you don't actually think about the size of it, but when. And I look at the walls now, I'm just, I'm getting depressed. <laughs> yeah, so we said next time the painting is due, we're just going to tear down the walls and have make a make it into a, a brick house instead. Yeah, yeah. So, that's next. Mm. 
Yeah, so a lot of uh, family stuff and uh, and practical <coughs> stuff going on. Not too many big yarn events happening the latest month. No, we have mostly we have uh, birthday parties at the moment because I think we are about seven seven people in the closest family uh, who had their birthday like in two two to three weeks. Yeah, yeah, True. and the. The school is finishing and everything else, so we have some things to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're keeping busy. Yeah. But there are things ahead of us which are more <coughs> yarn related. I can see on our whiteboard next to us. Yes. So, what's happening uh, moving forward? Yeah, so um, we were invited by uh, Tante Kofta, uh, or Lotta as, as her name is. But um, Tante Kofta, I think uh, that's her most famous name <laughs> on uh, Instagram. And she invited us to uh, get along on her. She has like an open, uh, I don't know how to say atelier. Yeah, like an open studio. Yeah, like an open studio sometimes. And uh, this time the 9th uh, of June, she has an open studio and she invited us and also uh, Tant Ultus, who designs um, very lovely socks and mittens and everything, she, uh, will come along as well. And she sells books with those patterns. Yeah, yeah. and Tant Kofta is a dyer, a Swedish dyer as well, a, a well-known dyer in uh, here. And um, she will say, sell her yarn and we are taking some of our yarn as well. So between 10 and 3 o'clock the 9th of June, we are there. And you can sit there and knit and um, buy yarn and things. And then on the evenings we will have some time with them and their husbands and uh, have a barbecue party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that will be very nice. Yeah, and you're of yeah. course all welcome to come and see us there on uh, on during the daytime at least. Yeah, and, and I think uh, Tante Kofta has most of the information. Uh, I, I am uh, never... <laughs> I am never updated in there. <laughs> we will but, make sure that the, the yeah. details of this event is yeah. duly published on our Instagram mm. as well. Yeah. And we hope to see some of you there. It will yes. be really nice. Yeah. And it's really funny with those guys, uh, <coughs> Lotta, as her name is, and her husband Mats. Because mm. uh, we, we were there uh, a while ago, just visiting them and kind of seeing how they are working and so on. They are very nice people. Yeah. And I told Petra, this is like, <laughs> this is like looking into the future, because these guys are a little bit some years older than us, mm -hmm. and um, they have a similar business to us, mm -hmm. although they have been, of course, doing this for a much longer time, um, and uh, it's like seeing the company that we have, but in the future. So, yeah. so it's uh, it's quite funny, and some of the things that we are doing uh, here uh, and struggling <clears throat> with, and making all these creative solutions to in, you know, in our practical environment, they're doing the same things. So, one of the problems when you dye yarn is that you use a lot of electricity, and if you use a lot of electricity, the circuits can pop. So your electricity goes out, and you have to fix with the circuits, and it's quite irritating, I guess. Yeah. So the way to get around that is that you use electricity from different circuits in the house and you have these long cords and then you kind of don't overheat the system. Mm -hmm. And this is something we are doing here and I told Mats uh, that and he was like, yeah, we have the same here and then he showed me all these long cords going from different places in the house and one was going from a garage or, or the neighbor or whatever it was. So they were doing exactly the same <coughs> things. Mm -hmm. It was quite funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's happening soon. I uh, hope to see you there. You mm -hmm. have also a couple of other things uh, going on <coughs> in terms of cooperations. Yes, uh, the collaboration. The collaboration. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, the collaboration with Vispard Nitz, who uh, designed Marfa, for example. She has designed a new shawl in my yarn, and it calls Pietra, which was very nice. And I, uh, she, she had it out for test knits, and I knit it up as well, and I'm actually finished with it. That's good. Yeah, so I think she will release the pattern in just a week or something like that, and I have 
plans for maybe dyeing up. Uh, it's kind of three skein kits for it. Mm -hmm. That would also work for other shawl uh, designs as well. But yeah, yeah, but it's ready. I don't know if I should show it now. Um, no, no, not yet. <laughs> okay, not yet. Okay. We have to stick to yeah. the program. Yeah. But I have noticed one thing actually. Yeah. You have become more of a finisher the last couple of months. Yeah. I think it was a couple of months ago <laughs> you were in this uh, panic mode and you had maybe 10 ongoing projects or something like that. Uh, very close to 10. Could be okay. 9. And uh, it was... Uh, uh, but now? You're like... Yeah. Uh, I'm like in, a new person. Like a factory. A newborn. Yeah. I'm a newborn finisher. Yes. What's happening? But, but I have problems starting now because yeah, I don't... you're just finishing. What's happening? I don't know. Maybe because I'm I'm having a middle age crisis. I have to rinse up, up after me. <laughs> you are cleaning out. I'm cleaning up in case yeah. you pass away. Yeah, or because what? I I don't know because it's the same. You know, like I have. <laughs> since, <laughs> maybe it's because I'm kind of. Uh, I don't know what they say. Nesting, like when you're pregnant. Are you pregnant? No, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> It's it's kind of the Ugh. same feeling because you know I want to. My hairs were rising on my arm. No 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 not pregnant. But <laughs> it's the same feeling. I want to get everything old out. It's like kind of when I start a new yarn base, you know, and I have a lot of yarn lying down there that I have decided not to dye anymore, and I just want to get everything out and just get in with the new, and then maybe stick with my bases for a while. And okay. get all the knitting projects done and ready and just start new things. So it's kind of, I'm nesting but uh, without the pregnancy. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe. So, do you consider me young or old? You? Yeah. Old. <laughs> no. <laughs> I consider us middle-aged because we are middle-aged. Yeah. Maybe, but you might not have realized that yet. No, I have realized. I'm just thinking about what you just said. <laughs> yeah? You're cleaning out the old. No, okay, okay, I'm cleaning out you. No, I'm not cleaning out you. <sighs> okay, that's yeah. good. That's good news. Yeah. Anyway, so, so I, I've, I've started to finish things. But now you need to balance. Yeah, but I, now I don't know what to start no, with. No, but that's the, that's the point. You've, been, you've become too good at this. <sighs> You're too good of a finisher now, so you need to balance it up and be also yeah. able to start things again. Yeah. I, I saw on Instagram, maybe it was today or, or yesterday, that you were actually asking for help on finding patterns yes. or something. I would like a new dress uh, cardigan for, for a dress. This has never happened. You are always coming to me and say I have uh, 59 patterns, I don't know which one to choose, but now it's, it's empty. You need to help her now. Mm. Help her get back. Mm. Help me. Please. Oh. Oh. Yes. Oh. Okay. I don't know. Anyway, it yeah. was an observation. Yeah. Okay, so you have that Petra collaboration. Mm -hmm. And uh, Anias, as her name is, she's um, also planning to design a sweater in my yarn. So I yesterday I dyed up some yarn that she might uh, like. I think she will have... Um, two strands of merino singles uh, together and design some maybe DK weight uh, sweater. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know her plans yet. She uh, We just uh, talked about it and um, I have no idea how it will look or anything but it's kind of exciting. Yeah, it's absolutely. fun with the collaborations and and so because you have kind of goal to uh, die for and uh, see someone else. It's always that's most fun when you see other people work in the yarn, so that's that's nice. So her name is Annie Haas. Yes, this where, bird knits on Instagram. Where is she from? From America. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Mm? Cool. Any other things going on or happening very soon? Uh, no. I don't, not that I am aware of. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Your birthday is coming. Yes. Up. Okay. Well, yeah. 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 On the 7th of June. Yeah, among all the others. 
It's, it's not kind of the excitement as it was uh, 30 years ago, maybe. No. You just turn one year older. Yeah. <laughs> but the alternative is worse. Yes, of course, yeah. It's, it's, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, what are you working on nowadays? Then? Yes, I, I want to show one thing first because today in Sweden it's kind of 25 degrees and yeah. I'm sweating like a little pig here. Yeah. Because I'm wearing something. Oh. Yeah. For a change. You're yeah. wearing something. <laughs> yes, for a change. So the, the, I want to show you this first because it's all hot here and I just want to take this off afterwards. But this is uh, the latest project I think I finished. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It's the Ranunculus sweater, I think that's the name, Ranunculus, by uh, Midori Hidosi. Hirosi. Hirosi. <laughs> You're looking at that, yeah. I look at the whiteboard. Yeah, and it's a ravelry pattern and I uh, knitted it up in uh, my Merino singles. One strand of Merino singles and one strand of fussy mohair. So they're knit together on a six millimeter needle. And uh, it looks, I don't know if I should, if you see, it looks like this. It's kind of, I made it kind of short. I think the pattern is kind of short as well. With a quarter, what do you say? Quarter length? Mm, three so, quarters. Three quarter length. <clears throat> and uh, it's the colorway nutmeg. <clears throat> it's kind of a new colorway. And I really like it. I don't know if you could see uh, uh, how it looks. Yeah, it's very nice anyway. I modified it a little because I like these boxy sweaters, but I don't want them to be like a tent or something like that. So uh, I took away maybe four of the increases under the arm and uh, moved the arm a little bit further up. Just not to get the, yeah, get it too wide because I don't like the sweaters too wide, and not over here because I think it just looks like a bag yeah. over your shoulders if they get too big. So that's the modification I did, and it's kind of also I think the original pattern is knit and in one strand, and it gets kind of airier if you could say that. But uh, I really like it this way with a. Fussy mower and things, and I, I think the um, the shape and the form uh, keeps better together, maybe with a little thicker material. I don't know, but I, I have only knitted this, but yeah, I'm very pleased with it. Otherwise, I just follow the pattern and uh, knit it on the same uh, needle size. I'm terrible at making, uh, checking the gauge and things. I never do that. I just uh, start knitting, mm. and then I. Uh, Hold my thumbs and hope it will fit when I'm ready. If it doesn't, it's just thrown away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't like that. I don't. I don't like the pre-work with anything. Actually, that's maybe because I never could be a designer or anything. Like painting the house. I. I it's fine painting, but everything but before no, no is one so likes boring. That pre -work. No. So, yeah, I just knit and hold my thumbs and uh, hope everything goes great. So that was that. It's very cuddly. Oh, it's very cuddly. It's uh, like the silk mohair base, my fussy mohair base. It's, I think it's so gorgeous. Yeah. And I ordered new um, labels for it and I think I will dye some up for, um, if you'd like to... Um, I have it as a pre-order actually. All my bases are as pre-orders in the base colors, but I think I would dye some up and yeah. I love it anyway. It's so cozy. Mm. Mm? It is. Very lovely pattern. I really recommend it. Yes, yeah. good. And then which <sighs> one should I take now? Yeah, you can take that. I take this one. <clears throat> so the next um, sweater pattern I knitted is I have already knitted this before. <clears throat> But I knitted it again. It's uh, the Tenya sweater by Caitlin Hunter, also known as Boiler Knitworks. As you probably know, I love her patterns. I think she's great and I really love this pattern. Uh, the last one I made short sleeves on and this one I made also a three quarter of a sleeve. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is knit in my Merino Swirl base. 
um, a merino nylon blend uh, on I think needle 3.5 and I just yeah I just followed the pattern for this one same size and <coughs> same width and so on yeah I, I don't know because I don't know the measurements uh, <laughs> I, I, I actually I have no idea I, or I, How do you know when to, when to Yeah, but I, I think like one <coughs> of the things I always think when I knit a sweater is that a sweater and yarn and <coughs> the knitting garment is uh, it's like kind of a jersey fabric or something like that. It always stretches out and I don't like overstretched to, to uh, loose uh, sweaters because I don't think it's so flattering. I like them more feminine and maybe a little shape of the body and things. So I always knit uh, one size uh, smaller. I almost always knit the, the small size, even though I'm kind of a 38, which is kind of a medium mm -hmm. in the European uh, sizes. But I think they, they yeah, if you, if you make it uh, larger, it just feels so... I don't know. I, I don't like it. So I always I always take the small size and then I just knit. Okay. I never check anything else. And sometimes I know like this one I made the small size but my arms is not too thin so I think I I changed a little on the armhole here so I made it the length of the medium size to fit your big muscles. To fit my big muscles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, so I, I often do small changes. I, I never actually follow the patterns completely because I know maybe I need some larger arms or some yeah, maybe some waist uh, shaping or something like that. But yeah, Looks so this really is nice. uh, <clears throat> the colorway rose gold, and uh, this is a kind of a new colorway, and I think it's very beautiful in garments and things. So. Yeah, and this Merino Swirl Base is a lovely yarn for for garments. It's so soft and yeah, I really like it. Hmm. Hmm? Good. <coughs> and then you have the one that you were talking about before. Yeah. The Petra. Petra. That's a nice name for a pattern. Yes, a very nice name. So it turned is out it like this. Now? Yeah, it's finished, it blocked and everything. Um I don't know if you could see. I can help you. Yeah, I, w I want to take it in here because it's it's. Uh, I, I like the colorways together. So this is also knitted in my merino swirl base. Um, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. It's a th uh, three skeins in it in um, and they're kind of fading into each other. You could also knit in in just any colorways because I think it's fun if you have. Maybe two skeins a little more different and then turning them into because they have like every other row you change color for some rows. So I think you can take just any three colors that you really like and mix them together. So that's what I said before I'm planning maybe to dye up some kits for shawls, three color shawls. Anytime soon? I think I will start uh, next week because I'm planning to bring along uh, some of those um, kits uh, to Gothenburg, to oh. Tante Kofta. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Let's hold yes. it up. It yeah. always glory. Was. Yes. It's so big and glorious. Yeah. So Look it's kind this. of a nice lace pattern here and then you have just uh, uh, the knitted stitches in between here. So yeah. It's like a piece of art. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, mm -hmm. and then uh, you have something in your mysterious <coughs> little bags over here. Yeah. So we start with this one. Okay. So this was the bag that I bought in Edinburgh from Pink Hazel bags. And I love them. They are very nice her bags. Well, so that was just... Uh, I should have had the sock blockers for this one just to show. But um, yeah, I knitted up a sock. Uh, and uh, it's in the color, this is a new color, we call it lipstick. And the yellow color is uh, Happy Land. And it has uh, pinks and greens and yellow speckles in it. 
So this was the sock I knitted and I'm just starting the other one. The last night when we watched the series. Yeah. Yeah, so that's one project I'm keeping keep going. And the last project, mm -hmm. this is something that I, I for some reason feel a little bit proud of too. Because <coughs> this is like when, when you find a little bird and uh, you just, you know, it's about to be thrown away somewhere and you, you kind of save it, you mend its little wings and then eventually it flies away in a beautiful summer evening. <laughs> this is the way I feel about this because very poetry. Yes, very poetic. Mm -hmm. The project in here was very, very close to dying. It was very close to be frogged. Yeah, and killed. And we ha we got the explanation for frog. Yeah, what was that? Because <clears throat> you rip it up. When you rip it up, it sounds like a frog, like rabbit, rabbit. <laughs> so that's that's. Uh, <laughs> It yeah. doesn't sound like a frog. Yeah. Okay, that's a uh, all right. And but, but maybe not the Swedish. I heard you rip up the. But the maybe thing. not the Swedish. This is a rip, rip. No, but you call it rib. Okay, you rip. El it. rip it, me now. Uh -huh. Ah, when you rip it up. I thought you meant the sound. No, when rip. <laughs> no, I understand. Yeah. yeah. So the word. Okay. Anyway, this yeah. was uh, this was a a close one. Yeah. But now you finished it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Almost finished it, yeah. but uh, yeah, the knitted the knitted part is ready. So this is the Emily cardigan, which is, I think this is the third Emily cardigan in it. And um, this pa I really like this pattern because it has a nice little lace section over here, and <clears throat> I don't know what to say about. The it's difficult to hold it up, but can I help you? Yeah, I can hold it for you. <clears throat> anyway, the I don't know if you say the lining. No, the the neck, um, like the neck here. I like when it's uh, many of those uh, cardigans or cropped cardigans. I think they go way too high up on your neck, mm -hmm. and I like when it has a little this round um, shape. I don't know what to say exactly. What do you say about this neckline? I don't know. Yeah, I know when the I like when the neckline is a little wider than just like this. I mm. don't like that. So uh, this is I think this has just the perfect fit and um, and it's so nice on and uh, yeah, I really recommend that pattern. Okay. So it's Emily cardigan by uh, Elin Bergelund. I guess she must be Swedish, or maybe just... Sounds very Swedish yeah. at least. I know a few American designers have Swedish names because... And, and you always... I know like... Um, uh, yeah, I have... So I don't remember them now. But there are many famous uh, designers that has sweet... To me, Swedish names. Okay, so those are the things you're currently working on. Yeah. And as, as I said before, you're finishing quite a lot of yeah. things. I just need some button bands and some buttons for that cardigan. Yeah, that's what's left. So on. next time, I think we can expect a lot of started projects. Yeah, I hope so because yeah, maybe that uh, uh, brioche haul from the call that I started and never finished. Yeah, but it it feels very far away. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what it is with that show. No. Nah. You have two of those, don't you? Yes. Ongoing. Two yeah. brioche. Yeah, and by the same designer and I love the patterns. They are just beautiful shawls. And I just I don't know what it is. Hmm. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe some sometimes. Yeah. Hmm? So, uh, we were saying that you haven't done too much yarny stuff since the last episode, but I know that in our shop there are things uh, happening. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Yes. Uh, I have two new qualities that I started dyeing up, and uh, one of them is Lux Fingering, which is a non wash base with 50% Merino non wash and 50% Silk. And it's a very lovely shiny base and the drape gets very lovely in it. Um, so it's 400 meters on 100 grams 
and uh, I dyed it up in yeah some colorways, many brown and pink colorways. It turned out so, some days I'm very brown and some days I'm kind of pink. Pink. <laughs> It's kind of the same. The well, this is actually, it's a lovely base anyway, and the, the drape and it's, yeah, it's get gorgeous knitted up and you can knit like garments or shawls or baby wear or anything with it. And the thing with this non zip wash yarns, I have written a little about it on my Instagram page, but um, the speckles and the variegations is absolutely not the same in a non superwash base as in a superwash base mm. gets very very different if you see like this here we have a the sport weight which which is also a new one um, when you speckle the yarn the dye <coughs> stick immediately to the base when it's a superwash base because it has kind of a surface that um, saturated saturates the dye immediately but the non zip wash base uh, needs more time in the dyeing pots and uh, it kind of mixes together the dye and uh, the speckles doesn't stay there so it has time to move around which gets everything a little more subtle and and so on so it's kind, kind of a big difference to dye those two bases okay so the same uh, dye uh, the same um, colorway gets very different from one another. And I must say that this this <coughs> quality here, the one you just talked about, I really like too. I think it's a really really nice quality. Yeah. And it's, when you feel it, it's kind of uh, like you said, it's it's mm. shiny in a way. Yeah. So it's very very soft. And you liked skeining it. As it well. was the perfect yarn to skein <laughs> yeah. because when you skein, at least when I skein, you stand like this, and when when the um, when the, the skein becomes quite twisted, mm. it sticks to my finger. So I yeah. can't do the last two twists without fiddling around. Mm. But this one, because of the silk, mm. it just slid, slid perfectly. Yeah. It was amazing to skein. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. But we, we need some of those skeining. Yeah. You promised to buy me equipment. Yeah. I promised. Yeah. It will come. It will come. Like yeah. my <clears throat> other sweater, you will do Yeah. <laughs> That will come as well. Yeah, someday. Good. Same day. Same, same day. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> okay, so the other base is uh, this uh, squishy sport, I call it, the squishy sport base. And this is 300 meter on um, uh, 100 grams. Uh, and it's 100% uh, Merino Superwash yarn and it takes the dye really beautiful and mm. uh, it's so soft and squishy and it would be great for a cardigan or hats or gloves or yeah just anything so that was I'm planning to knit a cardigan in this uh, quality for myself the next project so that's what I'm looking for a project for something like this okay and I'm thinking it will be a pink one a pink one yeah wow. so that's uh, the other quality and I really like that one it's very cozy so that's two news and then uh, I have dyed up uh, these days some sock kits that will be available in a different, um, in different colors. This is the one you, yeah, you showed, this, right? This one is the, the one that I've knitted myself. Um, it's this uh, yellow speckled and this little lipstick colorway is new i think it will be available as big skeins as well and i have it in a blue colorway this blue is a very very hard um, colorway to show because when i photo it it always shows another color yeah i know we have tried it's every amazing. every camera i, I have no so idea what strange. it is yeah but this is, uh, I, I made, uh, I had a colorway before called Pond and I would call this Pond as well because I made that mixture a little different because it turned out a little different every time. So I changed that recipe and uh, I really love this because it's, it, li it has a little more intense to the teal. Um, it's, it's a teal blue, like Pond, like a Pond. Mm. But I, I, this is so great and it fits very well with this um, lighter like blue mint green i don't know what to say yeah i say everything 
that has blue in it blue but everyone says no that's mint no that's green no that's because many people mean blue is uh, like a navy mm. or marine color and mm. I don't like those two I, I can't dye that uh, blue I love uh, teals and turquoise and things but I say blue to them as well. yeah, but, so, yeah. I, I, I would agree to that yeah. that's a type of blue to me as well yeah and these are also two colorways that will be in the shop like this is my mud a speckled version of mud with some light pink and this very subtle speckled green with some pink speckles and this green to it so they are beautiful i think i really like them i don't know if i showed the last one this brown this is coffee shop with the the nutmeg colorway as well so they will be available in the shop and then i'm working on mini skin kits Yay! Yay! I have worked very long with them because I think I wrote about four weeks ago. I would I plan for an update with mini skeins, but um, I <coughs> I shall not say that things. What should you not say? I just uh, I should just dye it and put it in the shop because dye it and shut up. Yeah, I should dye it and shut up because when I say I'm going to put it in there, I get kind of stressed. I always get stressed when I need to do something okay like when i have said i will dye it then it just feels not fun anymore so then i just know i want to dye something else and then i don't give a uh, i almost said a very not not nice word i i uh, <laughs> i don't mind i don't <laughs> i don't like it to dye it then no. because i like to dye whatever i feel like to dye but now i feel like them and they might be in the shop maybe Who tomorrow knows? maybe yeah. next year but Maybe never. Yeah, there will be many of these. And these kind of pop colors, I think, you know, I, I've said before, I actually don't like uh, these neons <laughs> so much. <laughs> but I'm a twin in the stars, so what do you say? Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes I like this, I think. Um, I think these will be available for pre-orders in the shop, among with the other semi-solids, because I know people like these uh, just for if you knit the sub to shawl with in grey or things like that it's, it's fun to add maybe a little extra edge and or something like that with mm. some of those it's so, like you did on the sock yeah right? like i did on the sock you have like um, a base color and you want to add a little extra and so i think these these are very cute and i think they will be available uh, as uh, pre-orders actually as well also for big skeins or only yeah for big skeins for big. no for big skeins okay the pre-orders are only for big skeins uh, at the moment so uh, but uh, yeah nice yeah that was a little of the things in the shop yeah but there's quite a lot of stuff going on actually yeah must say yeah and i know you ordered more yarn so more yarn is on the way yeah, yeah so i'm bringing back the old uh, a single and i i'm sorry about this but i i i love knit with a new one that has 400 meters on it but when you dye it like the the strands or the straps or what do you say that are um that are kind of knots around when you dye they are so lousy on those skeins because they fall mm. off and uh they they are stuck to get very tight and you get like kind of shades in the dye when you do i i really don't like that no. and um it's it's not uh i don't think it's professionally done that that thing i don't know what it is no, but i, I, I love to it's it gets so beautiful and it's lovely to dye and uh, lovely to knit with but to dye the old uh, quality is much better and i i don't want that uh, when you start dying that you feel a little irritated because uh, everything doesn't work as it should and uh, so it's important to me that everything looks like smooth it should be smooth in the in the work in the dying session i think mm. yeah so it they it will come back the 365 meters on the single skates single skeins with a little higher twist on that one um and I, that's the, the base I had most of the time, but uh, I wanted to try a new, a little more fluffy thing. <laughs> but no, I'm getting back to the old one. I really like that. And that matches my mini skates as well, because that's the same twist and the same length on it. So that will be fine. Yeah. So this week I'm, I'm dying up the last one of those. Yeah.
Okay. Hmm. So a lot of new things coming up in the shop soon then. Yes. Or sometime. We, some. don't, we don't know when. We don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it's a little, my little section then. Yeah, maybe if we shouldn't uh, answer the questions this time. Oh, we can uh, do that. Or do you want to do the other thing first? Yes, I thought we would end with the little Yeah, we do, yeah, we do that. Yeah. That's fine. We yes. do that. For you, for you who want to listen. That's good. Mm. Mm. So, Robert's turn to bring up some important stuff. Merci. Thank you, Jeanne. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, so... Um, Last time I was uh, thinking out loud in the pod and uh, talking about a ball <laughs> and yes. peer along. And uh, you know, sometimes you learn to listen to your inner voice and keep it inside and sometimes not. But anyway, uh, I give this uh, some thought and um, what I will like to do is uh, on Instagram, I will, I will put this down here so you can read it unless you... In case you don't follow, uh, I will make a hashtag called Fruvalborg Ball. And on this ball, I will start with one picture of myself drinking a beer that I really prefer. And I am also working on a beer related knitting project. What that is will become uh, evident when I put it on Instagram. <laughs> I think this can be like the fidget spinner and become a huge trend. Because sometimes when you walk around and you want a beer and you don't have anywhere to put it and it does not stay cold. And I have <laughs> solved that problem. And you can even bring a friend. So you will That's see. That's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. It's an amazing yes. thing that I mm -hmm. have uh, invented here. Um, and it will be evident on Instagram. So what I would like you to do if you want to be a part of the ball, you, there are two, <coughs> two different things. You can either post a picture of yourself knitting with a beer of your choice that you find is good when you're uh, when you're knitting and hashtag uh, Fruvalborg ball or or and or I can say you can also make a beer related knitting project and put it on the same place and I will keep track of this uh, hashtag and follow it uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to see you, know, you guys uh, on there and also to see the beer the types of beer you drink when you knit so that's the ball yeah yeah I think we will turn over the internet with this one. So that's cool. <laughs> uh, the other part of this is of course that we have a new beer to try. Yeah. And I think I mentioned this last time. Last time we drank a beer from my mother country, Norway, which was of course an experience. <clears throat> mm -hmm. This year we are in uh, my other mother country or your mother country of Sweden. Yeah. And uh, this is probably... That's this guy. <laughs> It says another thing. Yeah, no, it's, it's made just, in Sweden. But this is the type of the beer. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So this is probably the most local beer we will ever drink in yeah. this pod. This yeah. is very, very local. And uh, you got it from uh, Ingebo Hagar when you were there. 100% mm -hmm. organic. 100% organic. It cannot be more. Uh, it's a German type of beer. Yeah. So it's a German pale ale. It's called Helles Pale Ale, and uh, it's made in Ingebo by your friend's husband, right? Yeah, I don't know his name actually. No. Let's call but, him. Yeah, it's it's the Gordon. She, her, uh, her name is Susanne, but Gordon woman on Instagram. And if you are interested in beer, I'm sure you could contact her there. Yeah. There so. is actually a homepage for this. So I will mm. post the homepage address okay. uh, down below here so you can see it. Yeah. And uh, if you want to get in touch with these guys and get some more beer, then please do so. Now for the taste. The color is a little bit muddy inside, you can see. Quite light. Yeah. Let's see. Mm. It kind of looks like honey. Yeah. It smells very good. Let's see. Oh, mm. it does. It smells nice. Mm. That's good. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I try one. <laughs> you will get any this time because they asked if it was the beer who made you crazy last time. It when was, we had your. It was show. the beer. Mm. So it wasn't my fault. 
So I have to try this beer, all the bottles. Yep, drink it up. Bottoms. I think I, th I thought it was very good. Yeah. Yeah. Can I have a yeah, little okay. sip? Yeah. If you promise not to hijack the camera again. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, indulged this beer mm -hmm. into your system now. Yeah. And your senses are starting to flow. Yeah. So do you remember the grading system? <laughs> <laughs> Immensely complicated grading system. <clears throat> yes, I remember. Good. Uh, yeah. So you are first you are to judge how many uh, plies. <laughs> Yeah. This beer has, and then how many skeins you give it? I give it two plies. Two plies? Because it... Yes? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> but that is... Uh, yeah. It's uh, kind of easy to drink, but it has a very... Why the filling? I don't know. No. It's, it has a very filling smock. That was Swingish. Yeah. <laughs> And in terms of the skeins? Yeah, I give it um, four skeins. Four skeins? Yeah. That's a really, really oh, good result. Oh my god. Uh, mm -hmm. Four skeins. Yes. Which means that the Helles beer from Ingebu Hagar gets two plies and four skeins. Yeah. Can I try it one more time? Uh, Okay. Oh, you get so sad. You would like to say it no. after. Please send us more beer, Ingebu Hagar. Yes. What do you think then? Would you give it any skeins? I think this was a really, really good beer. Mm -hmm. I would give it four skeins too. <gasps> Actually, mm -hmm. so it was a very nice. Yeah. Beer. Very nice. Yeah. This is our fifth. This is the fifth beer we are rating. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I had to find a way to remember the results because you know we're going to try 10 beers and then we will have a winner. Yeah. I did experience or, or discover a little flaw in my logic, but I of course fixed the flaw. So uh, I will now, or I will keep track of this. I have made this little chart here. So it says the quest for the perfect knit beer. And then you can see the logos of the beers we have tried so far. Mm -hmm. And then I will put the, the, the next beer down here. Yeah. And the flow I made was to, to determine which beer is the best one. Someone has to win, so we have to add these points together. And mm -hmm. the skein part is easy, because the more skeins, the better the beer, right? Yeah. But we also had the ply, and the ply isn't really necessarily saying anything if the beer is good or bad. It's just if it's thick or thin. Yeah. I so, think it's if it's easy to drink or not. Yeah. Mm. So therefore, I had to be a little creative. So I made um, an executive decision. Yeah. And the decision was that when you are performing an activity such as knitting, you do not want to have a beer with five plies. It will be too heavy. Yeah. You because you not... need a beef. Yes, you have to have a beef. <laughs> And you can't eat a beef while knitting. Where do you no. put your hands? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. On the other hand, you cannot have a beer with one ply because then you need to go to the toilet every five minutes and you lose track of your patterns. Yeah, that's not good. Not it's not good. good. Or no. wear a diaper, which would, you know, become very ridiculous. So the perfect ply for a knitting bear is two. It would not be three? No. It will be two. Hmm? A lot of research is behind this okay. from, from you. sources I cannot disclose. Okay. Hmm. Therefore, uh, the point system is the skein is of course the, the quality and the, if you give it a two ply, you will keep the skein score. So if you give it four skeins and two ply, it will be four <laughs> points. Yes. If the ply is one or three, then you lose a point from the skein count. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. Which means that currently we have two beers in first place. Mm -hmm. One is the first one we tried, the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. That has a two ply four skein, meaning four points. Mm -hmm. This one we just tried got the same score. Mm -hmm. 
So we have two in first place, and this is now becoming very, very exciting. I'm thrilled! What? Let's see uh, where this takes us. So we have tried five beers, meaning we're halfway through. Mm -hmm. And I will try to come up with a good beer for next time. Something different, something from a country we haven't been to. And uh, let's see where we end up. Mm -hmm. So, now, the, the specialty of this episode is that we have a Q&A. Revolverx Q&A. <laughs> that was a kazoo, by the way. It's very beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, we on uh, YouTube, when we have posted these episodes, we have apparently received questions. Yeah. And, uh, Which is very fun, because uh, then we have something to talk about. <laughs> yeah, otherwise we just sit here and look into the camera. Yeah, that's not good. No. Yeah, no. So we therefore, of course, wanted to answer those questions, and we hope to get more. Yeah. So we can do yeah. more Q&A. I don't know if we should have a Q Q and a are questions and answers, I, I guess that means. Mm, yeah. If we should have one of those threads on Ravelry, would you think that... Would be a good choice, maybe? Yeah, why not? Ask yeah. us anything. Yeah. And we will answer. Yeah, S some of it. Yeah, unless it's illegal to answer. Yeah, but then we don't have any answers. No. No. No comment we will write. No. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I have a list of questions here and I will ask you these questions. Okay. And uh, you will hopefully <coughs> answer them. Question number one. <laughs> you need to seem serious. Yeah. Question number one. How do we run this company? Um, well... <laughs> <laughs> you have to make a sound. Do ah, it like this. But from that one? Oh, that one. <laughs> Come on. So how do we run, run this company? <laughs> this company is run by us. And <laughs> <laughs> that you didn't know. I don't know what to say, but in the in the start, the meaning with this company was actually to sell yarn, like Malabrigo, or just nice hand dyed yarn that maybe wasn't so very big in Sweden. So. Um, we started taking in uh, different yarns and things and started selling like it's, maybe it's kind of two years ago now mm. and uh, since I love colors and uh, yeah like more special things if you say so yarn that you can not find just anywhere so we we brought yarn in and the, the idea was to sell that and then I as I said I started to contact hand dyers and asked um, if I could yeah, sell them, wholesale them, I don't know, retail them, mm. I think you say now. Mm. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> there were no money in this company. I just started because that, that's my biggest interest with um, yeah, the handicraft and, and things like that. So, uh, and there was no money and uh, as I very well know now, it's a lot of job behind uh, hand dyed yarn and uh, it costs what, from what you get, <laughs> what you say. So uh, I, can't, I couldn't afford to buy that in at the moment and then I just said to you, well, I can dye it myself. I'm uh, a textile teacher as well, so uh, I, it's, some, it's some things that I have tried before and uh, I have worked very much with colors and uh, mixing colors together before because I'm uh, from the start a uh, ceramic, ceramist I think, and like a potter, I throw the wheel mostly, so yeah, it, it felt like I, I can try it and then we see. Mm. And when I started dyeing uh, that yarn was the one who sold the most, so the other yarn is now like sold out and... Uh, we still we have some. The, I still have some eco cotton, like, like uh, organic cotton yarns is still there, but uh, maybe you get the profile that there's hand dyed yarn here and uh, 
so you, that's what you want and yeah. that's very fun so I, I'm so so happy that you like the yarn I dye and it feels great but that, that's the whole process I dye the yarn and do everything around that and Robert helps me with many things like uh, scanning the yarn and labeling the yarn and uh, all the ideas I throw on you and you, you have to rethink about things and but uh, it's it's only me dying in, in our kitchen mm. so it's a very very small company and um, I'm kind it's sometimes I'm a little stressed because there are so many questions about colorways and bases and I die all the time and I have no more time to die so it's kind of a it's difficult to, to know how to do when when you sell a lot of yarn but but I don't have to I don't I just have two hands and I just have the working time and you're doing Today, this uh, full time since Christmas yes or since New yeah. Year and it has gone very well for Frivalbari and that's mm. so fun and I'm so grateful that for all the comments about the yarn and we yeah. are so happy it, it works and it's so exciting and amazing in all the ways so it, it's but sometimes the feeling that, that you don't are, you're not enough you, you could be like two or three persons in this thing just to manage all the work because yeah. it's so much work like the dying part is kind of one third of the time I think yeah. and two thirds is like taking photos, scanning, labeling, uh, working with a web shop, uh, Instagram, knitting, ev everything of that takes, answering emails take a lot of time, yeah. yeah. And it's really, uh, it's really been an amazing journey, I mean we started with literally nothing. Yeah. And yeah, when you when you dyed your amazing. yarns, you had never dyed a yarn before in your life, or maybe you had. But yeah, not, I not had like this, dyed now, not like this, no. not like this. And uh, the growth of this company is very very uh, fast, mm. and it's every month we are amazed on how much we have actually been selling. <gasps> yeah, so we great. are truly yeah. uh, uh, humble and truly thankful for for all of you mm. who are supporting us in this. Yeah. This is a yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing it's am thing. Yeah, it's amazing. It's so thank you. I could never have thought it would be this great when no. I when we decided that I could stop working. Mm. Just for, thought that maybe yeah, it would be great if some buy the yarn. <laughs> but now it's yeah, it's. It's ah yeah, so thankful for that. Yes. And then the <laughs> second question: hmm. um, can, this one, this one? can you teach us more about how you are coloring the yarns? Uh, yes, I, I got some uh, of those questions. It's not. I, I think. Some of you are interested in how I mix the dyes and yes. things like that. That's uh, actually like, an additional question. Yeah. Here. How do you mix the colors? Yeah. So I thought maybe someday when I'm dying here, I could. Uh, when I'm dying, it's like. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not dying. I'm dying. Yeah. But uh, I could show you when I weigh the powder, like the dyeing powder up, and how I mix them together, and a little about as. A, the color theory is such a huge area but I could show you a little because all the base colors I'm I'm mostly um, mixing together with blue red and yellow like the main colors and I mix them and adding some gray or something like that and it's can and the intense of the colorways makes the result very different if you use a very very small amounts or very very big amounts of the dye and how you yeah so that's that's a, a large area but I could show a little movie when I let's do, do one of those specials yeah we did a special with you once right and let's do another episode yes. only about this yeah so we will do that mm -hmm. and you can see and uh, Petra can teach you a little bit more yeah okay question number three Yes. How did we meet? That is a very long story. Uh, Robert and I have known each other for many years. Uh, we are we have both been married before, and I know in the 
first episode I told you about Robert's um, wife before that she died and uh, Robert and your two daughters um, were still there but uh, Malin as her name was uh, she died some years ago and um, she was my absolute best friends from when we were about two years old and when Malin met Robert, which was also many years ago now, uh, like as many as when I met my previous husband, but uh, we met as a, as a couple and uh, Malin introduced us and I introduced my previous husband to you guys and uh, we, uh, we were friends all together and uh, Malin and Robert, you are kind of for one of our children, you are, I don't know what to say in the... The godfather. The godfather. Yes, Rob's the godfather. And actually, we got married almost now exactly one year ago. But the previous wedding I was on, which was kind of many years now, but it was when I was uh, the maid? The maid of honor. The maid of your and Malin's yeah. wedding. Yeah. So I have not been on many weddings, but that wedding I was the maid for you and for Malin. And uh, so, yeah, it's a very special story, this one. But um, I got separated some years ago, so that's kind of many years ago. But uh, uh, when Malin died, we, we kind of hold the contact just for the children. They have known each other since they were born. And yeah, we hang out and went to, to go to baths and just did some went to the park with the children and things like that so but maybe after a year or something it kind of were some other feelings involved in the meetings we had so it was kind of nervous and very strange because we had known each other for so many years and it was a strange maybe strange uh, situation because Marlin was my previous best friend and uh, yeah we, we all known each other and yeah so it was kind of strange, but it turned out very, very good yeah. in the end. It did. Yeah. Hmm. So that's a long, a long story. Yeah. But a, a nice, and it's um, it's nice uh, that the kids have known each other for long, and that we have known each other for long. It's not so easy to meet someone when you have children, and you have like you grown up, and you have all your life like kind of put together already, and a new person should fit into that situation so so that's that's the story behind how how we met mm -hmm. yeah and it was very nervous i remember also when those other feelings <coughs> started to come and you suddenly became a lot more than a friend and i didn't know really if you felt the same way or if it was only me yeah so it was uh, yeah it was nervous mm. It turned out very nicely though, yeah. and last year, almost exactly a year ago, we got married. Yeah, so. just a few days. The 3rd of June is our first wedding day. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Note to self. Okay, mm. um, something completely different then. Yeah. You said that you get coffee and ginger. <laughs> yes. Every morning. Yeah. How is this done? <laughs> yes. First of all, Robert is the one doing it for me because, but you cook ginger and lemon and honey together yeah. and mix it and uh, it's like of a ginger shot you could say, so I get kind of a, a little glass every morning and it's supposed to be very healthy. <laughs> I hope it's healthy. Mm. Mm? I, I haven't been sick I think since I uh haven't. -huh. Oh, I don't, I don't so. know. I don't think so. Not since before Christmas. No. no. So yeah, it's kind of strong and gets to your throat, but um, it's also good in the morning. You kind of uh, wake up when you drink that shot. So I think, and it's I, you can find it on Google, uh, like uh, ginger, honey, and lemon shot. I think it's very easy to make. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, it's, and then the last question. Uh, these uh, pots that you cook in, the, the big ones where the yarn is, where the skeins are lying like this. Yeah. 
Where do you buy those? Uh, I actually, I also wondered where I should buy them because I couldn't find it in a regular kitchen store or things like that. But I, I, I went to a local restaurant because you, you see them in the schools and in the restaurants. You see these, you could say canteens maybe as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I just asked on the restaurant, where do you buy this equipment? Because it would be perfect for my yarn to dye in and, and things like that. So, and he told me there was a, in, in Sweden anyway, there is a store called Teamstad that uh, you could buy them. And they come in different shapes and different sizes and different heights and things like that. So I bought them there, but I guess you could ask in just any restaurant where you see they have them because um, they know where to buy that buy it mm. and it's not uh, it's not so uh, expensive either maybe 20 euro 20 euro if you take it in english <laughs> yeah so yeah they're great mm -hmm. perfect yeah, yeah. I, I dye almost yeah. every colorway in though i sometimes use the pots <clears throat> But to me, I'm kind of, since I was a ceramist and throw a lot and got very hurt in my back and things, I'm kind of weak. And when you have a large dyeing pot and you have to mix this, the yarns and have it in the movement all the time, I get kind of very tired in my shoulders and things. And I really like those pants because it makes it a little easier for me to dye, I think. And it's also easier to... You know, I could dye a very semi-solid color if you just want it black or things. But I like when it, when the color moves and when you get the... I want to dye the yarn like that and that's much easier in a pan because uh, then um, you could... Like watercolor, you could paint... You paint the yarn a little like a painting, I think. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So look, look there, ask there. All right, so that was the list of questions. Mm. We answered them all, I think. Yeah. Uh, and like Petra said, if you have other questions, then you can either put them on uh, YouTube under our pod, or of yeah. course uh, in this uh, new Ravelry group. Should I do one? I can do one today, yeah. uh, today, if you like. But here is fine as well. I, I know sometimes when we have recorded this, you look sometimes in a week or so and, and answer, and then it's kind of the... The episode is kind of forgotten in a while because we don't do this every week. So sometimes we're a little slow on answering on the YouTube channel, but we try we try to answer and uh, we, we see what you write there. And thank you so much for your comments. It's so fun to read them and so fun you find us here. So, <laughs> what was this? That concludes, I think, the episode yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, should you like this, then please feel free to hit the uh, thumbs up button. That makes more people see it on YouTube, apparently, mm -hmm. somehow. I don't yeah, know and how. subscribe. Yeah, and subscribe, of course, yeah. to the channel. Mm -hmm. um, questions, comments, improvement ideas, suggestions, whatever you have, please let us know. It's appreciated. Uh, thank you so much for, for staying with us. Thank you so much for supporting our company. It's an, uh, it's an amazing journey we're on, I think, and it's of course all due to, to you guys, so we are very thankful about that. And I hope you have a nice day. Yeah, have a nice day, and thank you for watching us and taking your time, and giving your time to us, actually. So, have a nice day. Bye See bye. you next time. Goodbye. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here